So I haven't, uh, if you haven't already watched the first video, it's not a bad idea to do that. But this is the second video where we're going to talk about the calibration curve. And calibration curves are extremely common in chemistry. In fact, um, they're common for blood alcohol content. So if we look at the question for the blood alcohol content, again, mine looks a little bit different because um, it's the instructor version. But what we do is we take a bunch of samples. So 0.02 blood standard, 0 0.04, 0 0.06, 0 0.08, 0.1, and 0.12 and we inject them into an instrument called a gas chromatograph and we see how big the peak is and these are not real life peaks but we could get these different peak areas for the different things and what you'll notice is every time there's more alcohol we get a bigger peak we then take a human being's sample who is a suspect of driving while intoxicated and we measure on the gas chromatograph how what is the peak area for alcohol in the person's blood sample and we then compare it to the standard so if you look in this case, this is 505.2 picoab seconds. So if we look, this is above 0.1 and lower than 0.12. So this person is above the legal limit, which is 0.08. Now, we're making an assumption here, which I know is true because I've done it, that these are going to provide a linear relationship. You can't assume that. You need to graph these and prove that there's a linear relationship between these things before you can use this to determine whether or not the person is intoxicated because if these don't have a relationship to each other then you can't do this it turns out that calibration curves are used all the time so you take standards and then you measure them on the instrument because it's not easy to um, actually determine these low blood alcohol concentrations by other methods. So what we have to do is take a standard and shoot them into an instrument, get a peak area, which is relatively easy to do, and then use the calibration curve to determine from the peak area what that actual concentration is. So how do we actually do that? Well, the first thing you want to do is, like before, right click and copy your data. Okay, then you want to paste it into your um, Excel file. I don't know why I pasted it like that. Um, So it appears sometimes it pasted like that. So I just recopied again, and then I just pasted it in with Control V. Um, then I just hit Control G to undo that. But if I also paste it in like this, it now pastes in. So if yours pastes in across, just try to copy it again um, and try to get it to paste into the cells like this. Okay, so you'll notice these are highlighted as red and blue, so we know where to paste them. And we're also going to need to paste in this. Um, green value here which is the unknown don't grab the don't grab the units because excel doesn't know what to do with letters um just grab the number and you can paste that in like that as well so i'm just hitting Control v to paste if you prefer you can just do this and paste this way as well okay so now we have our data in here now we need to generate what's called a calibration curve to do that we select all of the data click on insert click on charts and do an xy scatter Okay, now if we were doing this for real, we would want to go ahead and label all our axes, okay, and make sure we have all of that good. But in this case, what you can do is just click on the chart so that it's highlighted, go to quick layout, and if you click this one right here, it will give you the um, equation of a line, which I'm going to make bigger. You have no need to make this bigger, but I'm going to make it bigger so we can see it. Okay, it will give you the equation of the line and the R squared. So again, to do that, you click on here. This chart design will pop up. You click on the quick layout and you click on this one. Okay, it'll give you the equation of the line. It'll also allow you to um, title your axis. This would be peak area. This would be concentration of, blood, of alcohol in the blood. And you get this uh, equation of the line right here. You also get this R squared value. And this R squared value tells you how well the data fits the curve. I'm just going to move this over here because I know I'm going to need to use it when I show the question again. So we have the equation of the line and the R squared. If it's 0.99 or better, that's usually good in this course. Okay, for an R squared value, it means the curve fits the data well. If this point was up here, this number would be lower. Okay, the highest value of this number is 1. It's between 0 and 1. And the better the data fits the curve, the better closer it is to 1. And again, for scientific data like we collect, 0.99 or better is good. Now, we need to use this peak area to find the exact concentration of the blood alcohol content. To do that, we type in an equal sign to do math. This is a y value. How do I know that? Because my peak areas are on my y axis. Okay, and my concentrations 
are on my x axis. And normally we'd label these with units, but I'm trying to keep this uh, video pretty short. All right, so what we're going to do is equals, this is a y value. So you want to click on it. We want to subtract the um, value of b, the y-intercept, because we have y. So now we need to subtract this and then divide by that. Note that you need this in parentheses because you want to do the subtraction first. And don't forget your PEMDAS, your order of operations. Okay, in order to do that, to subtract first, you need to put it in parentheses. You then want to divide by 37, 67. 6. And this tells you that this person has a blood alcohol content of 0.11, which is what we said before, between 0.1 and 0.12. Uh, um, and we found that it's exactly between them at 0.11. If we click down over here, I'm going to make this uh, half screen, okay? It wants first the blood alcohol content, which is 0 0.1104 which is right there. Okay, it, the um, other one is uh, the slope of the line. Remember y equals mx plus b. This is the slope, so 37.67.6. And then finally, the r squared, which is 0.9985, which is that one right there. And you can select those uh, values. Okay, so that is basically how it works. I do wanna show you one thing. All right, I'm gonna put it in this cell. If you do equals this value, minus 89.22 divided by 37.67.6. You get a completely different answer, okay? Because you are not doing this um, correctly. What you're doing here is you're subtracting this and then dividing by this. And what you'll notice is that this number divided by this number is a very, very small number. Why? Because this is two orders of magnitude, if you will, and this one's four orders of magnitude. So this is a very small number. Said another way, these two values are very close to each other because you're subtracting a very small number from this one. Why does that work? Because by order of operations, Excel is going to divide first and then take that answer and then subtract this minus that divided answer. That's not what you want to do. What you want to do is subtract and then take the subtraction and divide it by this. And you can see these answers are very, very different because of that. So make sure you use the parentheses when needed. I'm okay with people overusing parentheses. Some people have a problem with that, but if you overuse parentheses, it's okay. But if you don't use enough parentheses, it can cause problems. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful.